If I were to say to you, Monster Hunter, what would come to mind? This? Perhaps this? Or this? Hopefully not the third one? This is Monster Hunter Diary Puri Puri Pudi Race, the only arcade game where the prize for winning is a slot on your local Sets Offenders registry. Released in 2013, Pudi Race is a spin-off of the hugely popular Monster Hunter franchise, a series of games developed and published by Resident Evil and Street Fighter creators Tapcom, all about buddying up with pals in order to batter the stain off a massive Drathen. Traditional entries in the Monster Hunter franchise allow hunters to play solo or team up with friends, completing quests and killing huge beasts in in order to level up their weapons and armour. As far as I'm aware, pith racing isn't usually a tall feature of mainline titles in the series. So how did Tapcom get this from this? Well, that's the exact question I wanted an answer for myself. So I did a little bit of research. Monster Hunter is Tapcom's second largest property, trailing only behind the consistently successful Resident Evil series, beating the publisher's more iconic franchises such as Street Fighter, Mega Man, and Devil May Cry. For Western gamers, this may come as a surprise. After all, in the United States and Europe, Monster Hunter has only really entered our gaming zeitgeist with the release of last year's excellent Monster Hunter World. But in Japan, Monster Hunter has been nothing short of a 15-year-long national phenomenon. Originally released in Japan on the PlayStation 2 in March 2004, Monster Hunter was initially met with a middling to fair critical reception. Publications praised its unique online capabilities but lamented its mediocre single player content and fiddly controls theme. It wasn't until a year later, in 2005, when Monster Hunter was ported to Sony's fledgling handheld, the PlayStation Portable, that the true appeal of the series was discovered by the Japanese gaming community. The ability to hunt monsters on the door was a perfect fit for the game's mission based design, and the issues surrounding online multiplayer, which was rudimentary, difficult to set up, and cost $10 a month for a subscription on PS2, were dated by the PSP support for free multiplayer via local wireless connections. While the initial PS2 version of the game sold just over a quarter of a million copies, this enhanced portable port went on to sell just shy of 1.5 million units. It was clear that Monster Hunter was a game built for social play. Since then, the series has continued to flourish in Japan, frequently selling millions of copies on both Sony's PSP and eventually Nintendo's 3DS. Over the next 12 years, the four mainline entries into the Monster Hunter franchise and their various definitive edition re-releases would go on to sell over 58 million units on handheld consoles alone. So yeah, it's fair to say that Monster Hunter is, and has always been, pretty popular in Japan. Sure, the games received worldwide releases, but sales figures paint a startlingly clear picture of how little the West took to the concept of hunting monsters on the bus. This is largely the result of two main reasons. Firstly, Japan as a nation has always favoured handheld machines over home consoles, primarily due to the country's reliance on easily accessible mass transit, resulting in the majority of the population spending large portions of their day commuting to work and still. Also, in larger cities, renting is incredibly expensive, and the dense population results in smaller living spaces making handheld consoles favourable over bulky consoles and large TVs. Secondly, there is a huge amount of pressure to be involved in communities within Japanese society. From a cultural perspective, Japan is very social a tall part of society that extends to its relationship with video games as well. Whereas gaming is still perceived within Western cultures as a solitary activity, in Japan it is very much a community-based pastime, with handheld consoles and bustling arcades a prevalent aspect of the hobby. It's easy to see why Monster Hunter, a game all about connecting with friends in order to achieve a common goal, is so popular among the gaming population of Japan. In a 2013 article published by Kotaku titled Why Monster Hunter is so popular in Japan and struggles everywhere else, journalist Toshi Nat Nakamura interviewed 24-year-old clerk Raihue, who recalls spending hours after work huddled together with his co-workers playing the game. Quote, My boss taught me into playing Monster Hunter 3rd. It's fun to work together with friends towards a mutual door. It's hard to imagine, here in the UK especially, your boss dead in your whole office hooked on Monster Hunter on your 3DS, but it's a great demonstration of the cultural differences that resulted in a handheld franchise about stabbing dinosaurs becoming one of the most popular in the region. It should come as no surprise then that the enormous popularity of Monster Hunter has led to a number of spin-offs over the years. While most are MMORPG variants of the traditional Monster Hunter formula, Monster Hunter Diary Porta Porta Iru Village is a huge departure for the series. Players 
appears to have orders to a bunch of felines, the tat companions featured in mainline entries, assisting them in completing mini games such as tutting, fighting monsters, and racing pids. We'll circle back to that bit. The game was released for the PSP in 2010 exclusively in Japan and was developed by From Software. Yep, you heard it, the Darth Souls people. So while you're online being all horny over Seth Aro, I'm on eBay trying to buy a second hand 3DS copy of Monster Hunter Diary Port to Port Iru Village. And yes, I had to write it down, it's hard to say. It's also hard to buy online. Turns out, if they don't localise it, it's quite expensive. Side note, Wikipedia informs me that Porta Porta Iru Village translates into English as Warm Feline Village. That makes me profoundly uncomfortable, and I can't quite explain why. <laughs> Capcom is also one of the few Japanese video game publishers that still operate their own chain of arcades in the region. Known as Plaza Capcom, the arcades offer the usual selection of fighting, rhythm and light gun games for their customers to enjoy, alongside a number of tabnets developed and published by Capcom themselves. From a business perspective, it's imperative for video game companies that own arcades in Japan to ensure their own franchises are represented within the scene. After all, they have a somewhat vested interest in keeping the industry financially healthy. For Capcom, this traditionally means arcade versions of Street Fighter, but in 2013, the company decided to release an arcade spin-off based on their second most popular franchise, Monster Hunter. Well, I say spin-off, what I actually mean is a spin-off of a spin-off, because Pudi Racer is based on the Pid Racing mini game from Aru Village, that PSP title. Nah, this is very convoluted. Let's talk about that pid f thing. Monster Hunter Diary Puri Puri Pudi Race is an arcade tart racing game similar to Mario Tart, where players race as felines riding on pudis, another of the series animal mascots that make an appearance in the main games. Players choose from one of eight cute felines before selecting a race track from a choice of nine, all themed around classic Monster Hunter locations and featuring stylized versions of the franchise's most iconic beasts. Players then race through a course in traditional tart racing fashion, picking up items from barrels in order to get the upper hand against their opponents and utilising jump pads to fly into a higher position, all while avoiding huge monsters that run rampant across the toss. Players then also perform a ground pound style move that can disrupt other racers, as well as letting their pids snarf down on some floor food in order to gain a temporary speed boost. You're mad because I won best hog at the hog shit snarfing contest. The dimmit here is that players control their feral hogs using a controller shaped like a poody. To move forward, players have to emulate a rotting motion using the controller, grabbing the poody by its bum and just doing to town on it. The faster you, uh, rot it, the faster your poody will do. To turn, simply twist the poody whilst rotting it. Fisting the button above its arse allows you to use items, or when your item slot is empty, execute a ground pound move. Oh, I really hate talking about this. The tabernet contains two monitors and two Poody controllers, allowing for 1v1 player against a friend or a stranger, although I doubt anyone would want to furiously reenact the first episode of Black Mirror next to an absolute rando. The branding of the tabernet is bright and colourful, featuring artwork from the game that is very similar to that of Monster Hunter Diary Porta Porta Iru Village, which no doubt delighted Japanese fans of the spin-off title. The signage contains an adorable little Rathalos, as well as this little fella, who is having an absolute field day. <laughs> him though. You could say he's done hard wild. Good for him. I don't know what does that mean? <laughs> Poody Race never received a worldwide release, which is understandable considering the source material for the game was an obscure spin-off title never released outside of Japan based on a franchise that in 2013 wasn't particularly well known in the West. Also, and this might be the main reason it stayed in Japan, it's really shit. Once you get past the initial dimmit of furiously dry humping a cartoon hog, the game itself is slow, clunky, and frustrating to play. Items feel useless, getting ahead of the competition is difficult, and having to move the controller constantly even when turning makes taking corners extremely difficult. It makes sense why Tapcom never ported the game to home systems after it was released into arcades. Still, as an oddity, Poody Racer really is quite something. A Japanese exclusive spin-off of a spin-off, a Monster Hunter tart racing game you play by grinding against a pid. A fascinating result of Japanese arcade culture, the region's obsession with handheld devices, and a company attempting to market their own intellectual property within a genre better suited for a completely different medium. This is my kind of nonsense. If you're in the UK and you fancy playing Poody Racer for some reason, Yoli and I found a cabinet at a little place called Arcade Club in Leeds. I'll put a link in the description below. Arcade Club is effectively an arcade where all of the machines are free credits. You don't have to put any money into the machines. You can play them for as long as you want and have as many continues as you like. You just pay a flat fee of £15 to get in. 
So it was like 30 quid for the two of us for a day. But we were there for like seven hours and we played all sorts of stuff. They have old arcade games, like all the way back to like Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and Pong. And they also have brand new arcade games, um, modern Japanese things like Puli Racer. And you can also drink, you can have a couple of pints, you can have a wander around. It's actually a really cool place and I can see that being the future of arcades. It had Fortnite, it had VR, it had all of these different cabinets and everyone who worked there was really nice. Thank you to the security guard who recorded me and Yoli um, going to town on those on those feral hogs. Uh, that was really nice. So yeah. Thank you for watching.